Welcome back to the Bull Ring. End of day number one. And India, having won the toss and batted first, were bowled out for 187 and have got a wicket of South Africa's and left them six for one. So South Africa trailing by 181 runs. Mikey Holding and Kepler Vessels alongside just for some reflections on the uh, day one that has been interesting to watch, certainly with a pitch that's done quite a bit. I'll start off with you, Kepler, and talk about the batting and difficulty on this surface from the start of today. Well, it was very difficult today. I think, uh, in fairness, I think you'd have to say the pitch did a little bit too much for the start of a test match. Uh, I think in that first session, the ball was going all over the place. I think it did something all day, even when the ball got softer and older. It was, uh, it was the sort of surface that you, you were never quite in on. And I think that if you got one wicket, you could get two or three. And I think that that's going to be happening tomorrow and probably the next day as well. So I think Michael Holding would have been delighted if he could have bowled on that pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, Mikey, speak about the bowling on that pitch in relation to the movement. And, and perhaps you can go back to what we were speaking about at tea time, where you're saying the ball hasn't been full enough on the surface. Yeah, I thought they were a little bit too short. I think... You know, when you get a service like that, you have to bowl a length that you'd almost be bowling in England. Where you're pitching the ball up, looking for the batsman to drive, and then the late movement they find the outside edge, and you bring your slips into play. The slip caught on for the first two hours this morning. They were just there. To, you could have given them a comic, and they just sat there and read the comic because nothing was coming to them. Mm. Short balls, balls that were left alone, balls that did too much before it got to the bat. You don't want to be doing that on, on this surface. And that's all about learning the surfaces on which you're playing and making the necessary adjustment. The guys downstairs in Hawkeye, I'm sure if they put together the pitch map of Centurion and the pitch map here, you'd get something very similar as far as the lengths are concerned. And they are two completely different surfaces. So it should be totally different. Mm. They might prove me wrong tomorrow, but <laughs> I think they might be... Totally different. They should be totally different. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, let, well, I'll come back to you with that actually, and you can explain the difficulty or ease of adjusting from pitch to pitch with regard to length and kind of going off what was a groove to what needs to be a groove on the surface. But let's start with batting and put into context the difficulty of conditions and the importance of the way a Pujara played today, even though he couldn't get runs quickly. Well, you have to accept uh, as a batsman, you've always got to be a little bit philosophical and think, well, if I get an unplayable one today, um, there's nothing I can do about that. And, and that's the attitude that you've got to have. You've got to try and leave balls when you can, but you've also got to try and score. So you can't just play that survival game that we always talk about, because if you do that, you're going to be batting and batting well for an hour, but be, be five when you get out, and that's not going to help. So Pujara did that. He did that in the first session, and he did survive. And he did very well to, to be able to have the patience to do that came out after lunch and uh, he played a couple of good shots square of the week in the offside that got him going again then he got into a rut again but again he was patient and uh, did well in the second session as well so you got to give him credit for perseverance and for character he showed a lot of that today and from a batting point of view that's exactly what you had to do i thought virat kohli probably played the perfect innings on that surface he was a bit lucky he got dropped a couple of times but you know you're going to be like if you get runs you have to have a bit of luck on that pitch but what he did was he looked to attack whenever he could. He played some uh, very good drives off the front foot, and uh, he looked to score. He didn't just look to survive, and he tried to take it to the South African bowlers a little bit. Mm. I think Birat Kohli is good enough to do that, though. I'm not too sure all the other guys are as good as Birat Kohli to do what he Birat Kohli did, or as confident of doing what Birat Kohli did. Because Birat Kohli, I think, is just a fantastic player, and he's so confident about his own game that he is looking to impress upon the opposition that, listen, you might have gotten some early wickets, but I am here now. The game has changed, and he has the confidence to try and do that. He's not going to be successful every time, obviously, but he's such a good player that he can go out and play innings like that. So in looking at those two players, guys, would it be fair to say each time that's kind of the way they play anyway? So Virat Kohli and concurring with what you're saying, Mikey, will look to take the game forward. It doesn't matter what the surface is like. And Cheteshwa Pujara will kind of look to settle in, knuckle down and bat a very long time on whatever surface. 
how then do you get perhaps those who are not quite as good as Virat Kohli to be in the balance of that, somewhere between the two? Well, I think if you look at the two of them, I think today was unusual for Pajara. He wouldn't normally be that slow. He is a conservative player, but he will score quicker than that. So then Kohli and him would, will complement each other pretty well because he's not going to just hold up an end. He'll be scoring as well. But um, I have to agree with Mikey. I think uh, Kohli is one of the top three batsmen in the world. And he can come out on a pitch like this and like an ABD Villiers can do. And not make it look easy, but make it look more comfortable than the other batsmen. But um, for Pajara today, it, it was a little bit unusual. Normally be quicker than that, but uh, that is his role. His role is to occupy the crease, bat for a long period of time and allow the other batsmen to bat around. Okay, let's get downstairs to hear from Cheteshwar Pajara. He can perhaps explain to us his difficulty on that surface, which understandably for batsmen was a rather tough one. Here he is talking to Sean Pop. A tough day at the office for yourself. Uh, had to work really hard, first of all, to get off the mark and also to avoid the bruises. Yeah, I think uh, it was one of the toughest pitches I've uh, batted on. So I, I really had to work hard to get, uh, score some runs. But to be honest, uh, to start off with, I think uh, overall we batted well. Uh, the amount, I mean, uh, the number of runs we have on board, uh, I think it is sufficient and uh, we'll be able to bowl them out. So uh, I think it's a good batting effort uh, at the end of the day. We sit there from the commentary box and we watch the surface and it's difficult to analyse exactly how it played. From your perspective, how did it play? What sort of surface was it? I think there was a lot of deviation. Uh, obviously, initially it was slightly on the slow side pace-wise, but there was enough bounce in it. Uh, but there was a lot of lateral movement uh, from the pitch and uh, uh, as we saw a couple of balls from the cracks, it did deviate it a lot. So I think as the game progresses, it will be difficult to bat on. Compare this one to the Cape Town surface? I think this is more tougher tougher and once you got yourself in I mean anyone who got double figures basically went on to get a 50 the two of you an important partnership for India did it get slightly easier or was it a continual ground I think uh, we were just surviving there uh, there was a very good partnership but uh, at the same time we were getting beaten so we thought that uh, there was enough help uh, in the wicket throughout the day even if you get set I mean the, I felt uh, you are never in uh, in this particular wicket so if we bowl well I think we have got a very good chance Okay, talk about bowling. Well, 187 after winning the toss and batting first, probably not ideal. But in the context of the game, is that enough to be competitive? Yes, it is. I think I, it is as good as uh, scoring 300 on any normal pitch. So uh, I think our bowlers, uh, especially they, they, they are used to bowling better lengths uh, than what South Africans are used to. So I, I think if you bowl in the right areas and if you uh, pitch the ball in the right length, uh, it, it is very difficult to play on this wicket. So I think our bowlers are especially used to uh, uh, bowling in, in that area. OK, thanks very much for your thoughts. Cheers. OK, interesting thoughts those are from Pujara. First of all, on it's a good score and it's like a normal 300. And then also in analysing South Africa's bowling from the two test matches gone and maybe also from what's happened there in talking about them needing to bowl full and India's bowlers able to do that. Mikey, as we look at the wickets and how they did fall, the Indian wickets, speak about the difficulty then for South Africa's big, tall, fast bowlers to get to the right length. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy for a bowler to just change the length that he's bowling because he's not really accustomed to bowling on certain lengths. You grow up in certain country, countries, it becomes pretty natural that you bowl a particular length. But you sh if you're playing test match cricket, you should be able to make the adjustment. I'm not saying, as I said, it's not easy, but it's test match cricket. You're the best that your country has. You have got to be able to make the necessary adjustment to adapt to the conditions under which you play. That is why great teams perform home and away, and good teams only perform at home. If you want to be a top-class cricketer, a top-class team, great cricketer, great team, you have got to make adjustments. You have got to adapt. So in taking the wickets, did you feel that it was each time that they went to the length you're talking about that South Africa got wickets? Well, we saw a couple of wickets from almost drives. Batsmen looking to drive, and that is the length that which they should be bowling on a regular basis. As I said on commentary, you will get driven sometimes. No bowler is a robot that he'll hit the exact length that he wants every time. He'll over pitch sometimes and get driven. But that's part of your job. You will get driven, but your job is to take wickets, not to be economical. Kepler, in thinking about how things have gone for the bowlers, I wonder if the competition or 
the number of bowlers within the side has anything to do with how they then perform on the day considering that at the disposal of Faf Duplessis this time there are five blokes he's got to try and look after. Well exactly and that from a captaincy point of view is very difficult. We talked before the game started and Mikey said oh well there's five of them they can only get two we could see. <laughs> <laughs> it well, nearly it nearly did happen. It nearly did happen. Yeah, yeah. If Ngidi came on there and got the one the last one who fought it would have been like that but difficult for Faf Duplessis to slot them all in. Sometimes it becomes too complicated because I thought at times he should have had Mornay Morkel on and Vernon Philander on but then he, he sort of has to almost go back to, to make sure everyone gets the ball. Um, Pech Lequire came back well. He didn't start well early. His wrist was breaking. He was just pushing the ball back in. But then he got two key wickets. So uh, that it got him into the test match. So I think on the whole, if they look at it, they'd probably be reasonably happy. Let's also face it, I think if they caught their catches, they would have bowled India out a lot cheaper. They dropped too many catches today. So I think that that was a disappointment. But uh, I still am with Mikey. I don't think the, the five bowlers, uh, particularly if it's five quick bowlers, all the same. Is, uh, is the way to go. Okay, Andy Lepesh, the way you spoke about him, got a couple of wickets that were important, and coming back into the side, having sat on the side, let's go to Sean Pollock and hear him have a chat with Andy Lepesh. And Dele, an interesting day's test cricket. Yeah, no, definitely. I think we uh, bowled pretty well today. Um, obviously, there was good conditions to bowl up front. Um, obviously, there were a few chances that went down um, that we're not too uh, worried about because I think the guys bowled really well at the end of the day. Um, two good partnerships from uh, Pajari and Kohli, and I think they probably forced it out. I think to survive on that type of wicket, you probably need to be really positive and uh, have good movements and look to score all the time. There was a lot of assistance for the bowlers during the different sessions at lunch and at tea. What was discussed with regards to game plan? Yeah, no, try to keep it simple, try to hit your areas, um, hit the deck hard, obviously a touch fuller. Um, it, has, it had a little bit of unvariable bounce, um, some will shoot up and some will keep it a tad bit low. And uh, obviously later on to the stage of the, the game there will be a few cracks, so just trying to hit to your hard lens. Back into the team, you must have been really happy picking up the Pujaro wicket, at that stage it was an important one? Yeah, no, definitely. Just to contribute to the team would be, was really good. Um, I think breaking a partnership and uh, obviously Pajara is a big wicket. He was batting really well and uh, just happy to contribute to the team. And your mate KG coming in as night watchman looking mighty comfortable? Yeah, no, definitely. I think he has huge potential with the bats. He just probably doesn't take it as seriously as he should sometimes. But uh, he's been looking really good and uh, hopefully tomorrow he can get some big runs. Okay, thanks for your thoughts. Thanks, Wally. <laughs> Yeah, interesting watching as he is interviewed then his mind is racing you can see that his mind is racing and wondering what Sean's going to go to to next but he <laughs> tries to sort of cover it all before he actually goes to is 187 guys a, a, a good score on here and many times we say you don't know until both sides have had a go but give me your sense um, Kepler well, I thought a score between 220 and 250 would be really good. I think the score that, that India have, I think it keeps them in the game, provided that they bowl well. We also got to remember South Africa have got a strong batting side. They know how to bat on these sort of surfaces, and they have scored runs at this ground. But uh, I think it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a good score. I think it's a score that can keep them into, in the game if they bowl well. South Africa lost a wicket. Um, mm. There's a, an encouragement for India. We heard from Cheteshwar Pujara as well. Is your expectation, Mikey, that all the way through, or certainly in South Africa's first innings, it'll continue to do what it's done today? I would think so. I see no reason why it shouldn't continue to help the Seamers. You know, there's a fair amount of grass on the surface, and the grass that's on the surface is not like the brown grass that was at St. Juran. There's a lot of green there. So I would suspect that the ball will continue to, to nibble around. It's, it's just as Kepler says. The score is as good as your bowlers make it. If they don't bowl well, the score will be a pretty ordinary score. If they bowl well, it will be a very competitive score. Mm. With regard to batting or bowling first, and we're looking at statistics there during, during the game, and what was it, 199, I think, was um, the, the first inning score that had, was the lowest and had done best and won a game here. Do we go as far back as that and kind of relate this to that, or do we throw all of that out the window? Yeah, I don't think that that'll be any relation to, to what happens in this test match. I think 
This morning I would have bowled first as well because I think at the Wanderers we know that sometimes you better to look up than look down. If you get overcast conditions, you get a little bit of uh, moisture in the surface and, so, and some green grass, it's not a bad idea to bowl. And the conditions were exactly right for that. But again, um, India now have the runs on the board and, and as Michael Holding said, their bowlers have to make it enough. And if they do, then South Africa probably won't be wanting to bat last. What if you get brown grass and, and, and cloud cover? <laughs> what happens? What tomorrow? Uh, no, normally. Oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then you've got a quandary. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble. Then, then you hope you lose the time. Lose the task. <laughs> oh, exactly. lose the task. There's exactly. always that option. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not available to you, by the way. Um, right. One more thing to do. And that's the RAM delivery of the day before we say goodnight. Philander. Oh, they like that. They like that, and up goes the finger. First blood. There it is. South Africa have started brilliantly. Looked like the inside edge. And it was, and a good catch from De Kock. 50th test match. Gets the ball to nip back in. Fine catch that by Quinton De Kock. There it is. You can see that uh, late movement. In fact, the wrist position is such that is very clever bowling very clever bowling from uh, Philander we're back tomorrow day one done a lot of wickets and we expect the wickets to continue to fall. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. Come and join us. We're on air at 9.30 on Supersport 2. But if you're around and you can pop out of the office, do so around the wonders. Have a good evening, gents. Um, you will. Thank you, Tommy. Nice and easy, okay? Couple. See maybe. you bright and early. Yeah, couple. No, couple no, maybe. no problem with a couple. Okay. As as it will only be a couple. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it stays at a couple. I don't want to start talking about your age and all of that, okay? Yeah. Good night, Kepler. Good night, Paul. <laughs> I love catching one. <laughs> oh, well, and good night to you all as well. See you tomorrow. <laughs>